I want to do something a little different this morning. Uh, it seems different to me anyway. But, uh, you know, we're, we're word people. Well, I should be word people. And I just want to share with you some things that God said about his own word. First of all, you know, uh, in, let's look at first of all, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Hallelujah. Somebody say it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Amen. We always win. We always win. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says this. All scripture, all scripture, all this, this right here. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Inspiration means God breathed. This scripture here, this word was breathed out of the heart of God. That's why it's God's word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. You will prosper through the word. It is for doctrine, for reproof. Well, we don't like that. But how many knows we need it sometimes? For correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. Now I want to read from Second uh, Peter. I believe it's chapter 1. First Peter. Well, let's see. First Peter chapter 1. No, you were right the first time. I should have known I couldn't have been wrong. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 1. You know those little books over there toward the end of the Bible? It's always been a struggle for me sometimes to find them. Uh, let's, we'll just read the 20, 20th verse in the first chapter. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. Everything in here is God breathed. I don't understand it. Well, you don't approach this with understanding. You approach it with faith. And after faith comes the understanding. Amen. Amen. Many people think, well, the Old Testament doesn't belong to us today. Let me tell you something. The Old Testament is full of history. It's full of God's Word. Not every particular verse belongs to us individually, but it is rightly recorded. And we learn from it. For God is not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So he said, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is, is of any private interpretation. So we can learn from all of it. For the prophecy came, and of course that's what these are. They're written by prophets. These are prophecies. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men spake or spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now I want to just give us some scriptures today because I want us to be reminded and I want to reestablish how important the Word of God is. How many knows that uh, you can let things slip sometimes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Things can just slip away. I mean, I mean you, you, your prayer life can slip away. Your, your, your word time can slip away. Your church time can slip away. And you got some help. He's called the devil. Amen. And, and he creates all kinds of circumstances to pull us out and to get our mind on other things other than God's word. Has anybody ever had a wrestle with your mind? Amen. I, I mean, I, I had the fight over there this morning. My mind wants to try to go everywhere. You have to tell it, come back. Amen. Come back here. We got, we got, we, we, we got, I, I'm going to tell you what to think because the real me is my spirit. My head may want to go a lot of different ways, but my spirit is who's in control. Amen. Amen. And it is our spirit that the word of God feeds. Amen. And then our spirit, of course, takes that word and applies it to our mind and our will and our emotions. So I just listed some things uh, that this Word has brought to us. Now, there's over a million copies of this sold every year. 
I mean, it, it's lasted a long, long time. Uh, since the beginning, actually. First thing I, I, that came to me, you know, this book tells us that there is a God. That's all right. mm -hmm. That there is a God. You know, now the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and his firmament shows his handiwork. So almost everybody on the planet Earth can look around with any intelligence and know that this didn't happen. That it, there has to be a master planner, a mastermind in charge known as God. There had to be a God. Now, for the lack of the gospel, many of them have reached out, and everybody does to some degree or other, they reach out for their God. Amen. I mean, even, even an atheist uh, reach out for their God, which is atheism. Amen. But see, uh, it tells us that, we're, we ha that God is, that there is a God. But then it goes further than that. It tells us we can know him. We can know him. Like I said, all over, there's all kinds of religions and, and beliefs all over the world. But they can't know God. Not our God. They can't know him without this word. And they've got other Bibles and other scriptures that they go by, but they cannot, they cannot know our God unless they have this word. Through this word, we find out about Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, and what he did for us, and about his shed blood that we've just been singing about. No, oh, that's powerful. Through the word, we find out that we can be born again, and we have a new nature on the inside of us. Our nature and our spirit is just like God's. Through the word, we find out that we are, we've got a conscience and that, that that conscience is the voice of our spirit. And so if we've been born again and we have a spirit like God's and we can, uh, we have a conscience. That's God's voice speaking to us, letting us know what to do and what not to do. Then another thing is without the word, we would be full of hatred. Without the word, we'd be like Muslims, killing people. Amen. Destroying, raping, trying to take over the world and, and just destroy everybody else that's not a Muslim. Without the, think about it now, I want you to think. With, if we didn't have this, if this had never been written, and if Adam in the garden, if he had not sinned, we wouldn't have needed this. But he did sin. And he sent the world into a tailspin of sin yes. and death. Yes. But see, we had to have this now. And without this, think about what would be in you. Just think about all the, the flesh, the carnal nature, and all the things that that nature and, and that lust wants to do. Yes. See, that's why you have serial killers. That's why you have rapists. That's why you have... All of these evil people in the world is because they don't have this or they don't know this or they won't take advantage of this. Amen. Uh, the, the Bible, this word is our moral compass. There has to be morality in this world. If there weren't, if there wasn't this nation, if there weren't, if it wasn't for morality, if it wasn't for this book, if it wasn't for the church, then we would have destroyed ourselves many years ago. But it, we, it's our moral compass. Another thing is, of course, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. Without this word, we have no hope. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yes. We have no hope. Yes, we have no hope for tomorrow. Yes, we have no hope in this life. We, but see, we have no hope for eternity. Yes. In other words, when we die, we're dead like a dog. Yeah. Amen. But we have a hope. Amen. Amen. Without this word, we wouldn't know the Holy Ghost. Yes. Our comforter, our helper, our guide, our strengthener, our standby, our counselor. Yes. Without the word, this book, I like to keep holding it up because, here again, I think God wants to stir, up us, stir us up this morning yes. Yes. concerning his word yes. to spend more time in it to meditate it, to feed on it. Yes. All right. This book here tells us what belongs to us. 
Through the blood of Jesus, salvation belongs to us. Deliverance belongs to us. Healing belongs to us. Peace belongs to us. Prosperity belongs to us. We'd have never known that if it wasn't for this. Without the word, we wouldn't know structure. We wouldn't understand the structure in the family, the structure in the church, the structure in government. There's a structure. God, uh, God is a God of structure. And we wouldn't know how to love one another and to treat one another. This is violated a whole lot, but in, 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 in this book, it tells us to love one another. If it wasn't for this book, we wouldn't know the truth. His word is truth. The Bible says that Satan is a liar and the father of all lies. Amen. You ever known a liar? I've known many of them. Amen. And see, you won't even, listen, you won't even know somebody's lying to you if you're not full of this. I've had people tell me things, and I'm sitting there listening to them, and they're saying it with such detail and with such unction. But I know this book, and I know God didn't do that. I know God didn't say that because what they're saying is not the truth. This is the truth right here. Amen. Let me just say this. You know, we don't have the right to choose what scriptures we believe and what we don't. Did you know that if we pick scriptures out, unless we believe this whole thing, honey, if God missed it one place, he might have missed the whole thing. So even though I might not understand everything in here, I believe everything in here. I believe it's God breathed. I believe that God gave it to us. I believe that the men that wrote, that wrote this book, uh, men and women, I believe that they were inspired of God. Amen. Amen. So the word of God is the truth. And let me just say this. There is an answer for everything you need, for every problem that you face in this life. You can find the answer in God's Word. Yes. Now, I want to give you some scriptures. I told you this would be different, but how about if I just go through the, not, and I won't give you all of it, but I wanted you to see some things that God said about His own Word. Yes. And like I said, there's, there's, uh, there's plenty of them. <laughs> I had to leave some of them alone because it would just uh, take too long. In Numbers 23, 19, it says this, God is not a man that He should lie neither the son of man, that he should repent. Yes, sir. God doesn't have to repent. God never tells a lie, never sins, never misses it. Yeah. He has said, and shall he not do it? God's going to do what he said. Yes. Now, he might not do it on your timetable, but he's going to do it. Yes. Or hath he spoken and shall not make it good? God always makes his word good. Yes. Whether we are experiencing it ourselves, the word is still true, and God always makes his word uh, good. In Deuteronomy 28, he says, If you shall, it shall come to pass that if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou should hearken unto the voice of, God, of, of the Lord. Amen. Now, if you want to read what the blessings are, read De Deuteronomy 28. Mm -hmm. It causes us, the word causes us to be successful. Joshua 1, 1 8 says this, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Prosperity always already belongs to us. It's been provided for us by the Lord Jesus Christ. David was prosperous. Abraham was prosperous. Yes. Amen. Um, Job was prosperous. You can go through the scriptures and see the prosperity. For then shall he make your way prosperous, or you make your way prosperous, and you shall have good success. Now notice what he said. If you meditate, if you 
See, God can't do anything without you. Amen. And if you meditate in his word day and night, then, then guess what's going to happen? For then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Here again, have you ever had to fight in your mind trying to meditate the word? And your thoughts want to go in every direction. But we must train our minds. Psalms 89, 34. God said, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that's gone out of our mouth. Abraham had a covenant with God. We look back and we see the Old Testament, New Testament. Jesus, his blood was the blood of the new covenant. And God will never break his covenant with us. Everything that God provided through the Lord Jesus Christ, it belongs to us. We may fail, but he doesn't. Amen. We may miss it, but he doesn't. Amen. Amen. Psalms 107, 20 says, he sent his word. God sent his word and healed them Amen. and delivered them from all their destructions. Thank God for the word. Amen. That's why God sent the word. Amen. Amen. Psalms 119, 05. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I need direction. I don't know which way to go. I don't know what, cho what choice to make. What decision to make right here? The Lord, the word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Feed on the word and you'll know which way is right and which way is wrong. Because your spirit will be built up to the point again that you will recognize truth from error. Yes, sir. Oh, Psalms 119, 165, the word brings us peace. He said, great peace have they which love thy law. I love thy word, and nothing shall offend them. Yes, Amen. Amen. Uh, have you ever been offended? Yes, have you ever known that an offense will destroy a person's life? Yes, mm -hmm. you, you, you can't live with offense. Everybody's been hurt. Offense means that you've been caused to sin through unforgiveness, hatred, are you listening to me? Yes, sir. We've all been offended, but we must grow out of that. We must know. For instance, I've had to, I've had to, I've had to learn. I've had to learn about how to deal with offense. Because when a person offends me, when they hurt me, when they wound me, when they uh, abandon me, they forsake me, they desert me, they kick me when I'm down, they try, that tries to stop me, and destroy me. That's them. Right. That's not me. That's right. So what am I? How, why, what, 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 see, what's in me is what's going to give my life. Right. It's what in me that I'm going to speak. Yeah. My tongue is going to be like a ship. Like a rudder on a ship. Yes, I'm going to determine the way I go in life. By not taking offense, but walking in forgiveness. You know, Brother Hagin said this, and I've heard Geraldine say this many, many times, but I, I, I guess I never thought through it because it just says something, but I didn't think it, 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 you know, I just didn't think through it. But this person came up to Brother Hagin and said negative things. He said, I don't like you. Don't like your preaching. Don't like your teaching. Mm -hmm. Brother Hagin said, well, you know, that, that's your problem. That's not my problem. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, if the problem's in you, if you got a problem with me, then you got the problem. I ain't got the problem. That's right. That's right. Amen. You got the problem. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. Now, see, if that's the case, then, and we're all going to be judged mm -hmm. because he said, by your word, you'll be justified, and by your word, you'll be condemned hello, yeah. then we're all going to be judged righteously by a righteous God. If God's in control of my life, then I don't have to worry about what somebody did to me. Because they're the one that did it. They're the ones going to pay the price for it. Amen. 
Whatever God, whatever, whatever the devil uses to steal from me, God's going to give it back in a multiplied form. Yes, amen. 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 Are we doing okay? Yes, sir. We are doing good. Good, because we're just going through these scriptures, and, and there's many more than these, but I'm just talking about what God said about his own word. And then in Proverbs 4.20, some of my favorite scriptures, he said, My son, attend to my words. Attend yes, sir. to my words. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we've got, uh, you know, Barbara and Vernon have, uh, I don't know, several chicken houses. Well, poultry houses, for those of you on the Internet don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> they, raise, they raise chickens. Well, those chickens have to be tended to. Right. They have to be. Every once in a while, when they catch those chickens, you'll see Vernon won't be here. Why? Because he's got to tend to those chickens. He's got to what? I mean, he's got to make sure they're fed, they're watered. So those 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 chickens have to always be on his mind. He has to always know that he's going to have to give attention to it. God said. Attend to my words. We ought to treat his words like these guys treat their chickens. They have to tend to the chickens. We got to tend to the word. Amen. In other words, give attention to. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear. I mean, we're just not sitting here. You know, No, we're inclined. I want to hear something, God. I want to hear from you. Incline thy thine ear unto his sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. The only way it's going to get in your heart is if you hear it and see it. For they are life. Listen to this. God's words. God's words. This book. Right here. Hallelujah. God's word is life for they are life unto those that find them. And watch this. And health to all their flesh. Yes. The word health there was in the Hebrew was medicine. Yes. God's word is like medicine. Yes. And medicine is not bad. Medicine is good. I mean, good medicine is good. Amen. All right. Proverbs thirteen thirteen. Now he talks about what happens if we don't put the word first. Whosoever despiseth the word shall be destroyed. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Oh, I like this. Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. Isn't that right? The, 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 the grass is getting ready. The flowers are fading right now. This time of year, they're beginning to fade. But the word of the Lord, it shall stand forever. It's not going to fade. It's not going to diminish. Amen. His word's not going to change when we get to heaven and when we have the new heaven and new earth. He's going to be saying the same thing. It never ends. And what's this? Isaiah 55, 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, he says, so shall my word be that goeth forth from my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. He sent it. He sent it. Hallelujah. Amen. And it will cause you to prosper. Just like the rain and the snow that comes down, it waters the earth. It produces something. It gives seed to the sower so they take in seed more. You know, the. I read this morning. No, I didn't. I heard John Hagee, I believe it was, saying that a watermelon seed has the potential of producing 200,000 more seed. Ooh. The, 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 the watermelon, I think maybe he said it this way, the, the watermelon is 200,000 times bigger than the seed. Yeah. One seed. Right. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yes, sir. Well, God's Word is seed. Yes, sir. It can produce in our life if we'll give it some good ground to grow in. Amen. All right. Isaiah 66, 2. For all those things 
hath mine hand made, and all those things have been said, saith the Lord, but to this man will I look. Woo. Even to him that is of a poor contrite spirit and trembleth at his word. You know, some people think there is no judgment left. I've heard people say that all judgment was laid on <laughs> Jesus at the cross. Well, that's true. That's true. But watch this. All salvation was on him. But not everybody takes advantage of it. He carried all judgment, but not everybody takes advantage of the fact that the judgment was on him. So we bring the judgment on ourselves just like he took our sins. Amen. Not everybody has accepted the price he paid. Well, not everybody is worthy of the judgment. I'm talking about being judged here in this life now. And of course, there's going to be a judgment to come. All these things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been said, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. See, we should tremble at God's word. It, could be, it should be so real that we don't want to mess up. We don't want to sow the wrong seed. Because God doesn't even have to get involved in that. When you sow the wrong seed, you're going to get the wrong harvest. On, true. Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rocks. In other words, his word can consume things. His word can, can his fire can burn things out of your life, out of your mind, out of your emotions. Those hard places in your life, those things that you have dealt with over and over and over again, his word will break it and destroy it. Yes. I don't know about you, but I've had to take the word of God and by saying it, meditating, feeding on it, preaching it, praying, prophesying it, amen, it changed my life. It's changed. It brought me from where I was to where I am now. Amen. You see, my future was already, how do I say this? It was already planned by the devil. In other words, there was a plan that the devil had for my life. My daddy died at 32 years old. I was seven years old. He was an alcoholic. Didn't draw a sober breath for the last two or three years that he lived. His daddy, see, see I, so I never knew my daddy like I wanted to. Well, his daddy was an alcoholic. His daddy committed suicide. So I didn't get to know my daddy like I should. And because of alcohol, I did not get to even know my granddaddy. He was gone before I got here, all because of alcoholism. Well, so my life by Satan had already planned. So by the time I'm 15 years old, I'm following that same path. I'm going down that same road, even though I know what it's done. I know that it's in my bloodline. I know what's coming. I still, I still was going in that direction until the Lord Jesus arrested me, Amen. delivered me, Amen. set me free. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. And the word, the word broke that out of my life. It broke that generational curse. Yes. The fire of God, his word is like fire and it burnt that desire yes. out of me. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. This is not too bad, is it? The word says in Matthew 4, 4, but he answered and said, it is written. This is what Jesus said to the devil. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We live by the word. See, Jesus got through that temptation 
40 days of fasting, 40 days of intense temptation. Now, this wasn't a principality, a power, a ruler of darkness of this world, or a wicked spirit in the heavenlies. This was Satan himself. It was the same devil that took the first Adam out. Now he's using everything he's got to take the second Adam, which was Jesus. He's trying to destroy him and take him out. How did Jesus deal with that devil and all that power and all that force that was coming against his mind? You remember what the devil showed him? All the kingdoms of this world, I'll give these to you. Some people say, listen, some people say, well, you know, that was Jesus. He couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't have sinned. Oh, yes, he could. It wouldn't even be a real temptation. Why have a temptation if he couldn't fall? He could have failed just like the first Adam. But he didn't. You know why he didn't? Because he had the word. And every time the devil showed him something, he would say, it is, it is written. That is the way that we deal with the devil. That's the way we deal with temptation. This is the way that we do our warfare is with the word of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Then in Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, Jesus said, and doeth them, I will be, he will be like a wise man that built his house on the rock. Now watch this. It's not God building the house. It's you building the house. You, your part is to hear the word and do the word. Amen. Amen. And then God will take care of the rest. But whether or not the house gets built or not mm-hmm. is up to us. And the rain sended, and the floods came, and winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Yes. Amen. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and built upon, uh, and, and beat upon the house, And it fell, and great was the fall of it. Oh, let me tell you something. Sin is sin, and what the Bible calls sin is still sin today. Fornication is still a sin. It was then, and it is now. Homosexuality is still a sin, no matter how many movements they have about it, no matter how, how many kin folks you got that are gay or whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change this word. Sin is still sin. Matthew 8, 8. What is good? The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come up under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant will be healed. You know, the centurion soldier came to Jesus. I've got my my daughter is laying at home sick. Jesus said, well, I'll come here. He said, no, Jesus, just speak the word. This man understood the power that's in the word of God. You got it? Amen. And it says that the the daughter was healed from that moment forth. Matthew 13, 23. But he that receiveth the seed, that's the word, into the ground, is he that heareth the word and understands it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth fruit, some hundredfold, some sixty. Some 30. Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth may pass away. God said, my word will never pass away. Amen. It's, it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Luke 5, 5. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have told all night. You remember the story, right? Jesus came to Peter and John, they'd been working all night, didn't have any fish, been fishing all night. That's, that was their livelihood. That's what they, how they lived. And Simon said unto him, because Jesus told them, you know, throw out your nets on the right. Jesus said, the, he, they said, uh, Master, we toiled all night, and we've taken nothing, nevertheless, at thy word. Mm-hmm. See, when we take God at his word, miracles happen. Yes. <laughs> and so they let down the net. They obeyed what God said. They obeyed Jesus, and when they did, They caught so many fish, it almost sank the boat. So, 
John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. John 8, 31 said, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, listen to this, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What is a disciple? A disciple is a person that continues in the word of God. They study the word, they know the word, and they do the word. That's a disciple. John thirteen seventeen says, if you know these things that God has said, then happy are ye if you do them. Amen. Apostles uh, gave a priority, watch this, to the word. Acts 6, 4. But we will give ourselves, you know, they appointed seven men as deacons to take care of the, of the feeding of the people in that day. They did not go out and do it themselves because they said, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of, of the word. The word had priority in their lives. Yes. Romans 1 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen. Romans 10 8 say what saith it thy word the word is nigh thee even in your mind and in the mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith which we preach. Romans ten seventeen says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. There is a God kind of faith. Yes, yes. yes, there's natural kind of faith. You can believe certain things. I believe it's going to get warm today. I believe the sun's going to come up in the morning. Amen. I believe a lot of things, but that's not, not necessarily the God kind of faith because the God kind of faith produces what's in this word for you. Yes, it's what belongs to us. Oh, like this in Ephesians five twenty six. He that that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word. He's talking about the church. The church is supposed to be clean, and the way it becomes clean is through the washing of the water of the word. Yes, Ephesians six seventeen. He said, and take the helm of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is. The Word of God, the sword of the Spirit. Your born-again spirit needs something to fight with, just like Jesus needed something to fight with the devil. What did he use? The Word. The Word is our sword. The Word is how we do warfare. Amen. Colossians 13, excuse me, Colossians 3:16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Yes, amen. Let, it, let, it, let it dwell in you richly in all wisdom, because there's wisdom in the word, in teaching and admonishing one another mm -hmm. in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Did you know, I believe it was Charles Wesley, that he knew that when he preached the gospel, a lot of it people are going to, Forget when they walk out the door, just like you'll forget. Some, some, some things today will stick with you, but some things you'll forget by the time you get home. Mm -hmm. But you know what he did? He wrote songs. Amen. And he put, he, he put words in the songs so that people would go out singing mm -hmm. the word. Yes, sir. That's what singing should be all about. Yes, sir. Not just inside the Eastern Gate. Uh, you know, or when we all get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Or down here, the load is heavy. When we get up there, we won't have to worry about nothing anymore. No, 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 no. We sing the word. Amen. You sing the word, it'll get into you. Amen. And when you can't think of what was preached, you can think of what was sung. Yeah. You know, God will give you, I don't know if y'all ever experienced this or not, but see, I'm a hunter. And I'll be sitting up in the deer stand sometime. And I'll catch myself. It's like it sneaked up on me. My spirit will be singing a song. You ever experienced anything like that? Or am I crazy? I mean, I, mean, I don't know how long it's been doing it. But all of a sudden, I, I tap into it. All of a sudden, I realize I'm singing a song. See, the real me is my spirit. And, and no, there's a lot of things going on in your spirit that your head doesn't grab because you're so distracted by so many other things in life. Yes, 
Hello out there. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as the truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. You know, we've heard so much truth. We've heard so much preaching. We've heard so much gospel that it's easy to just come in and just shut down our mind. And just let our mind wander, you know, and, and not hear a thing that's said. I remember I got a minister friend of mine, and uh, there was a guy that came in. Uh, he was a good man, you know, but he, he hardly ever said anything. And he'd come in, and he'd just sit there and sit there. And, you know, <laughs> A minister knows who's listening and who's hearing and who's not. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so he knew this guy went, uh, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't paying any attention to him. And so he just stopped and asked him. He said the, the, about something he had just said. He said, now do you believe that, brother so-and-so? He said, to tell you the truth, brother, I don't know what you said because I was thinking about how I'm going to fix my well pump when I get home. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, he was a good man. He was a good man. He's, he's a truthful man, yeah. It took a lot of tr <laughs> It took a lot of something to just tell the whole church right out. I ain't, think I ain't thinking about what you said. I'm just here. You know? I'm here because I'm supposed to be here, and that's it. Well, that's good. I mean, it's good to be here. I mean, just keep showing up. Something will get in you after a while. Yeah, just keep showing up. All right. <laughs> First Timothy five seventeen. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Double honor, it means salary uh, or honorarium. Second Timothy 5, 15, Paul writes to Timothy, he said, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed. 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture, we said this, has been given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, instruction in righteousness. The word of God tells you what's right. Our responsibility is to do it, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. And then 2 Timothy 4, 2, preach the word. He said, preach the word. See, this is what God called, this is what God called me to preach. Mm -hmm. Not just part of it. Right. Uh, but, 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 I, but, you know, I can't preach every bit of it in one service. But I've been doing this for 40 years. I've been preaching all through here mm -hmm. for 40 years. This is what it's been called. I've been called to preach, not psychology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, not the world's version of what sin is and what sin is not. That's true. I've had people actually say, I wish he wouldn't say that. I've had people tell me, I wish you wouldn't say that. You telling me not to say this? And then I've heard other people say, tell the other people. And it's supposed to be elders, really. And they say, I wish he wouldn't, wish he wouldn't talk about that. He doesn't understand. He doesn't understand homosexuals. He doesn't understand they're born that way. Everybody's born some way. You were born, I was born with lust, with desires, with cravings of the flesh. Amen. But you have to overcome them by the blood. Amen. You have to overcome them by the blood of the Lamb, by the Word. By the Word. You don't have to give in to it. Amen. Yeah, well, I won't tell you, but you know, I, there's thoughts come to me just like they do anybody else. Yes, uh-huh. 
I'm anointed, to, I'm anointed to preach, but I'm not anointed to live right any more than you are. Right. Amen. Yes, I have to fight the same battles on a, on a higher level, really, than you do. And if I don't learn to fight, honey, if I didn't know how to fight, I'd been gone a long time ago. Preach the word. Well, he doesn't understand. I understand this, some of it. I understand what the Bible says about it. Yeah. Hallelujah. So many, and, I, and, and I'm thinking, and I see on Facebook, people, they write things on there about God, 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 prayer, prayer, prayer. And I know them, they're fornicating. They're living with somebody they're not married to. Boy, it's quiet in this Presbyterian church this morning. <laughs> Give me a break. Now, 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 you know, I know God's merciful and he forgives and his mercy is greater than we would be. You know, I'm, there's been a lot of people, I'll probably, if, if it wasn't for the, the word, I'd have probably shot them. You know? I know you're not like that. No. Hallelujah. Hebrews 1.3. Who be in the brightness of his glory and the express, express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, by the word of his power. When he had himself purged our sins, sat down on the hand, sat down at the hand of the majesty on high. He talked about all things. He, he, he upholds all things with the word of his power. Listen to me. What do you think holds everything together? Think about it. What holds that chair together? What holds that moon in its place up there? Who holds that sun up there in the same place? Who, who holds this, I mean, all of these molecules that this whole world is made out of? Who holds it together? Why, is it, why does it not just evaporate or just fall apart? It's God's Word that holds it together. In the beginning, he created the heaven and the earth. And until he says, be not, then it is. His word is what's holding up everything. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4, 7. For the word of God is quick. That means it's alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of spirit and soul, the joints and marrow, and is, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. This word is alive and powerful. It changes people's lives. It changed my life. It changed your life. Nobody, the psychologist can't do that. The psychiatrist can't do that. The therapist can't do that. Anything they minister to you and or help you in is just temporary. In the right situation, at the right time, you're going to fall right back into the same place you were before you went to the therapist. But the Word of God, it will abide in your heart and it will transform your mind. And you'll be a different person. He said that it's alive and it's powerful and it's sharp and any two-edged sword and it divides the soul and the spirit. See, we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. So it's the Word of God. It's the Word of God that's going to discern between our flesh and our spirit, that old nature, that soul, the soul, the mind, will, and the emotions where we make decisions. We will know our thoughts, whether it came from our spirit or where it came from our, our, our body, our soul, our unrenewed mind. How are we going to know that? By the word. We know that we say things and get involved in conversations that we shouldn't a lot of times. And on the inside of us, something is saying, our conscience is saying, shut up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Because you know that you, you don't need to be involved in that because the word talks about the words you say, talks about gossip. Yeah. Talks, uh, amen. Yeah. <laughs> Hebrews eleven three, yeah. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed, what? By the word of God. Yeah. Light be. Mm -hmm. 
See, God, he 11, I believe it's 11 times in the book, first chapter of, uh, he said, uh, uh, and, there, uh, and God said, and God said, and God said, God said, let us make man in our own image now, after our likeness. See, we are the product of God's word. Everything that exists today came from God's word. It came from what God said. And what he says today is just as powerful as it's ever been. Are we doing all right? James 1, 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. That is, able to renew your mind, your will, and emotion, the engrafted word. What happens when you graft something? You take two things and you, you, you put them together. Now, before you can put them together, you've got to do some kind of, some type, kind of surgery. And so you put them together, and the reason that you put them together is so that it will produce something different than what the other two in their own would be able to produce. So when you receive the engrafted word, change comes to your life. Amen. Amen. Uh, James. No, I'm not going down. First Peter 1, 23. This is good. Being born again. How do we get born again? Not of a corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible seed by the word of God. Here again, many, 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 many times when God talks about seed, he's talking about his word. Yes. We've been born again, uh, not by an incorrupt, incorruptible word, but by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. First Peter 2.2 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. The milk of the word, milk. I've got a grandson right now. We're just now beginning to uh, give him some, you know, some natural food. Uh, but uh, he, he's old enough to start taking that food. In the beginning he couldn't take it. All he had was milk. Yes, sir. But he grew on the milk until now he could eat other food. It's mashed up, you know what I'm saying. It's yes, per, what do you call it? Parade. Yes, yeah. But soon day he'll be eating cornbread and buttermilk. Mm -hmm. Amen. All kinds of things. All right. Second Peter one. Second Peter one twelve. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things that you know them and be established in the present truth in God's word. First John 2, 5. But whosoever keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. What if everybody, what if every, what if everybody in this room, but what if every Christian mm -hmm. kept his word? Oh, come on. Then we'd all be walking in love. Yes, sir. Wouldn't be any church splits. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be any church exoduses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People wouldn't be fussing and fighting and striving with one another. Jesus said, Up to all men shall know that you're my disciples because you have love one to another. Yes. Well, if we don't love one another, then the world's not going to know us as disciples yes. of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes, then in 1 John 5, 7, Jesus is called the Word again. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Yes, Revelation nineteen thirteen. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. Who's he talking about? Jesus. Revelation twenty twelve. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of the things that are written in the books according to their works. You see this? We're going to be judged by this and what, how much of this we have lived by and how much of this 
we fulfilled. Your, the dest- your destiny is in here. Yes, sir. Your purpose is in here. Yes, sir. You've got to feed on it and meditate on it yes, until it shows up in your life. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Come on up, Miss Anessa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the word. Amen. Amen. I'm hoping it would uh, stir all of us up and give us a greater hunger for God's word than we ever had. He, if you hunger for something, you're going to find a way to feed on it. You know, you can control a nation until they get hungry. When they get hungry, they're going to rebel. If we hunger for the word, and I hope that's what happens after today in me also amen faith coming by hearing hearing by the word of god i'm saying what the word says it will not return void but it's going to produce some works in our life it's going to produce some hunger and we're going to feed on this word and walk in a revelation and knowledge of god that we never have before